Let's get into some news. There was some big Sony news this week. Uh, specifically, they went ahead and cracked that baby open, the PS5 that is, and they showed us all the fun, good stuff inside. Man, I gotta tell you, it was pretty surprising to see what was in there. First, like just right off the bat, Kratos, his Leviathan axe was just sitting right inside. Well, it's, and you know, like it's the only way to keep the cool, to keep proper cooling. Exactly. You know, like everyone was like, oh, my PS4 always runs so hot and so loud. And they made this sucker big. And they're like, oh, they did that for the cooling. You're like, well, that doesn't make any sense. And now we know why, because his axe is in there. And if you have never played God of War, the 2018 reboot, the axe is an ice weapon. And so it's going to make sure that your PS5 is running ice cold. I think the important question also On top asks of- is if I throw the PS5 at my enemies, can I can it come flying back to me? No, because you're not cool like Kratos. Yeah, that's that's fair. Now, if he wants your PS5, he's just gonna he's gonna stick his hand out, and you're you're never gonna see it again. It's gonna, it's gonna be gone, and it's gonna be coming to his hand instead. So, in addition to heat, no, not another common complaint. For, no, you couldn't. No. Another common complaint we get often uh, about the PS4 is that it's really loud, and it is. The fan just keeps going to keep it cool all the time, but it's like a jet engine. So they went ahead and they chopped poor Sly Cooper's feet, and they stuck them in there. So sneaky, sneaky, quiet, quiet. It's going to be great. I don't think I've actually played a Sly Cooper game, so I'm going to assume that you're correct that Sly Cooper is quiet. He is. He's, it's, it's, about, it's a stealth game. It's like a cartoon mascot-based thing. He's a raccoon, he's a burglar or something. I've never played him either, but I do know that one cannot steal things very well if they are not quiet. That's fair. They would have chopped off um, Sam Fisher's head if they could find the man, but he's been MIA for quite a while now. So. Did you actually see that they, they made a... It wasn't quite Sam Fisher. Like It uses a slightly different name for Rainbow Six uh, mm-hmm. or yeah, Rainbow, Rainbow Siege a while back. But the worst part of that is they didn't bring Jeremy Irons in to voice Sam Fisher. Yeah, I've heard that they've done everything except give people what they want when it comes to the um, Splinter Cell property. Oh, yeah, like they I, just I they refuse to make point, a new they game. Had, like Sam Fisher cameos in almost every other. Like I would not be surprised if I sit down to play like Assassin's Creed and Sam Fisher ends up killing like the King of England. Yeah, like, like or is the King of England? Or that? That's fine. I mean, at that point, I'm going to admit defeat, but... <laughs> I am now an Englishman. Yeah. It's... Always have been. Battle lost. Touche. So, so that'll cover the uh, the quiet, or the, the sound and the heat. Additionally, the panels can be removed, so those white, you know, curved pieces that make it all awkward shaped and you kind of have to stand it up. They can just, you know, just take them off and throw them in the trash. Save yourself some space. You don't need those anymore. Get yourself a nice black box with a little cool metal thing on the side. I thought that was really um, really considerate of them to let you take that off. Uh, I really can't wait to just go with uh, shoving it all back inside a piece of a box of cardboard and calling it a day. <laughs> it's, really, it's really the style that I go for in my house right now as I continue to attempt to unpack everything. Yeah, but for real, do you think what do you think this means for potential either officially sponsored or third party like customized things, or you know you can even paint it yourself, I guess. But that's usually kind of tricky. You think they're going to like allow for that? I would not be shocked if that ends up being something they do. I I think what you'll actually end up seeing that'll be kind of cool to look at going forward is uh, as fans come out and they and they will do custom paint jobs on it. Like I I, I can definitely see like some really impressive cu- custom paint jobs being done on mm-hmm. those panels because they're not that hard to remove. It seemed it was the easiest thing to do. There were two things you could do. You could take off the side panels and you could take off the um, the base unit that lets allows it to stand vertically. So if you wanted to lay it down horizontally, um, they do not recommend that you do that. But they say that, you know, for like optimal heating uh, or optimal cooling, etc., it really should probably stand up um, as well as all the dust. You don't want to get the dust in there. Everything was designed for that sucker to be a tower. And not some sort of sideways thing, which is going to make a lot of people upset. And they're going to turn it sideways anyway. So, um, I know I don't have any space for it. Could you put a PS5 in your current entertainment situation standing up right now? Standing up, uh, I would have to. So, like my my entertainment station, it's kind of like three sections. In fact, it's two doors, mm-hmm. so I'm going to have one section visible, visible at a time. So, like, mm-hmm. which means like right now, if guests were to come over, I just have the Nintendo one open because I'm a Nintendo household and I want people to know that. Um, but it has like two shelves, and if I took out all the shelves in one of the thirds, I could probably stand it up straight. 
and it, it, it's, it's going to be what I'm going to have to do with that and the uh, Series X if I decide to go down that route instead of the Series S. Because, but, but the problem is like right now it's nice because I can put like the console on the top and then I'll put like the controllers on like because I can you know, the shelves are variable and I'll put the, the you know my physical games because I'm still that person. Uh, and I'm going to I'm going to totally lose that because I'll, I'll, everything will just be scattered on one surface and it'll be chaos. So yeah, basically the answer is no. And much like everybody, we're going to have to scramble to figure out how to fit this thing in our house. But we're going to do it anyway because we want it. Yeah, in like two years, I'm still yeah, upgrade. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm not. Well, I mean I am, but I'm not going to. I'm not getting it at launch. But I'm certainly the second there's a hard date for um, God of War, I'll be there and I'll be putting the money down for it. So I'm basically just waiting for that. I'll probably get to God of, uh, this God of War about the same time I got to the previous God of War, which was about a year late. So, no, no, <laughs> not this time. This time you do it on time, so we can talk about it. Fine. And have a spoiler. Do it, I'll do it just for your podcast. Exactly. Spoiler <laughs> cast. Go. Kratos um, throws an axe at Thor. Calling it now. I hope so. <laughs> I mean, yes, that's definitely going to happen, but we'll see how well it goes for him. Moving on inside further, we delve to the motherboard, which also doubles as a summoning circle with the metal blood of Klangrax, Andromeda's cosmic overlord, ready to go for the ritual. So you don't even have to supply your own blood. You don't have to configure the circle at all. It's just right there, ready to go. This like nice little cute uh, display of like the ram, just kind of like in a circle around the center where the metal blood is, and boom. Demons, right there in your home. I mean, the nice thing here, though, is that the, 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 you know, the cooling fins actually act as a binding circle, so it shouldn't be able to escape your motherboard. Because, you know, that always goes so well. Yeah, perfectly. Who, who's, who's ever had a summon backfire on them? Nobody. I mean, I, I just do it all the time. That's how I get all the chores done around the house. <laughs> Not those kind of demons. Different kinds. And then finally, Knack from the game Knack was in there. He wasn't supposed to be, but they couldn't figure out how to get rid of him. And it was just easier to leave him in there instead of, you know, evicting him. So if you don't like Knack, that's too bad because he's here to stay. I think if this conversation has taught me anything is that there's a lot of Sony uh, IPs that I have no idea what they are. <laughs> Knack was a um, release title or launch title for the PS4. And it's just like it's a really sad attempt at a mascot platformer. He's like a big clunky dude who's also really small. Like he's like made of pieces of things. It's it's not good. Uh, I've never played it, but I've seen it. And he like just him as a character is incredibly underwhelming. <laughs> and they made a second one for some <laughs> unknown reason. And it did really mediocre. <laughs> and I just that's why I kind of put that in there. Because it's like they can't get rid of him. They won't. They refuse to say goodbye to Knack. Uh, of all works. things, Knack should be gone. <laughs> no more Knack. He has no Knack for no this. No more Knack. <laughs> uh, so that's what's inside your sony ps5 you can't open it or you'll break the warranty so yeah. uh, you'll have to take our word for it um they probably took down the video that we watched so if you find a different video out there that doesn't have all quite the same things uh, don't believe what your eyes and your ears are telling you you know it's fine believe us believe what we say yeah because we got that inside track exactly uh, in addition to showing us what it looks like on the inside, they finally today revealed the PS5 UI. Uh, did you happen to catch this video? Uh, I didn't catch the video. I went and watched some, or I found some screenshots of the UI mm -hmm. uh, after, or right before we filmed this. What did you think? Uh, like, <laughs> I've never been impressed with Sony's UI. Um, uh, I, I, I pretty much from the 360 onwards, I, I have preferred the Xbox UI. Um, but on the same note, like I don't like Android or, or Apple's UI. I, I prefer the Windows Phone, but obviously I lost that battle. So my opinion is clearly uh, of poor taste. Yes, it's, a, it's worth absolutely nothing to you know consumer markets. Um, it's, it's, it's just, not ugly. It, no, it's 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 fine. It, I, I, I think yeah. to me, I looked at it and went, "This is fine." Like. I I, I I it doesn't have any character. It just it's 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 it'll be there. Like all right, good. Exactly, exactly. Good. I can play my games. There was a lot of stuff 
happening like while you're playing a game you can access a lot of things like tips and quick little like micro walkthroughs or something which i'm sure will be completely dependent on the developer and they were um in the video i watched for the most part the only game they showed they showed two games it was the Sackboy game and the uh the demolition derby one i can't remember destruction all stars that's what it is yeah um and and it did show you coming in and out of both those games like just like lightning they showed another video of what it looks like when you leave a hideout in spider-man 4 excuse me spider-man on a ps4 versus spider-man morales on a ps5 and it's like night and day it looks like there's a full-on loading screen on the ps4 and it was particularly long i don't ever remember him being that long but it was quite long and then he comes out and he goes into the city whereas miles is in the hideout he literally jumps through a hole into the city there is absolutely no break whatsoever it is an instantaneous transition from being inside a building to outside in the full city of new york and i that was impressive i, I was very excited that's pretty cool that has nothing to do with the ui but it does have to do with the you know the S- sdd which S- at, bleh, excuse me the s sd solid state yes. drive not the solid drive drive um but yeah, I don't think we talked about that enough last week when we answered your question about like the differences or what we expect aside from graphics. Um, we totally skipped over how amazing like that that read speed is going to be for what you can do in the design space of a game. Oh, yeah. Well, there was there was something a while back. I think they were showing it with the Series X, and it was outer uh, outer worlds, and like yeah, you know, to, to load into the game from the main menu was like almost a minute on an Xbox One S. I want to say. And then they were showing it on just on the Xbox Series S, and it was like twelve seconds or something. It, it, I think it was like a reduction of like seventy percent. Yeah, I um, think I remember that too. Yeah, I mean that's 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 gonna to, to me that just you know especially coming from where, where I've played so much of like the Fallout and the Skyrim, and those both had problems on the three hundred and sixty. Where like the longer you played the game, the longer the loading screens became to the point where you'd be like, mm-hmm. "All right, so let me hit continue." And, I'm going to go off and make a sandwich and pour myself a drink and go to the bathroom and then I'll come <laughs> back and sit here for a minute and then I'll play my game. Um, like that's just from a convenience standpoint. I, I, I think that's what I'm excited the most about. And this is probably also because of how much, how little time I had to play now is that whole ability to like jump in and out and then not lose so much time to loading it just means what little time I have to play games. I'll be able to like better maximize. Yep. Full show. Can't wait. Um, but yeah, I mentioned it a moment ago, back going back to the UI, the, there's a lot going on sometimes. Other times it's actually quite clean and it doesn't get in your way and it looks like, you know, so currently the PS4, your little like media bar thing goes straight through the middle. There's like a, like another menu at the top and you can't really see the cool theme that you have. If you have one, that is, yeah. it's really easy to get one. They come with lots of games or you can buy them, etc. Whereas this has the stuff at the top and at the bottom in a slightly smaller way. Um, and it really allows for whatever background you've actually set to come forth, you know, completely. So you can actually see it, which is cool. Um, but at the same time, like I said, there's depending on what you're doing at that moment, it can be kind of a nightmare how much stuff was on the screen. So I don't, I don't know. We'll see how like, pushy they get with like advertisements and sales and because i already don't like booting up my ps4 and seeing like hey play madden i'm like absolutely not get this off of my you know like i don't i don't like that don't do that but they will yeah i mean i i think if we were to look at the current three consoles um i mean i i do i i really do like the xbox uh one layout just because of like the groups and the ease with which to me go track my friends, which the biggest reason I still, that I, I ever bought the Xbox was because that's where most of my friends ended up. Um, mm-hmm. you know, when I was, especially like right when I joined the Navy. Um, but also the Nintendo one's great just because it's just my games. And if I want to hit the button to look at the news, I can, but otherwise it's literally just like, ah, oh, here's the games I've played most recently. Click one and we can go play it. I love the, uh, the only thing I would ask for the Nintendo UI is a folder. That's it. That's all I want. The folder would be and nice. Themes. Yeah. Themes would be cool too. I want, you know, put Mario in the background and stuff. I just, I mean, to me, it's, I, I, I never spend enough time in that area anyways to worry about what's on the background. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, just a, a, a hallway that I walk through to get to, you know, from, from not playing video games to playing video game. So you're just going to paint all your, you're just going to leave all your house white and plain. You're going to put pictures of me and Jason up. Because it's just utilitarian. I mean, 
I haven't gotten around to hanging any of my photos in my actual house yet. It's, yeah, so I'm gonna go with yes. And that's what I'm talking about. Your actual <laughs> house. Yeah. No. I mean, uh, I mean, my hallway will, will will probably yes. All right. Fine. Yes, I will decorate. You're right. Yay! I can see you right. to you, good sir. Mission accomplished. Podcast over. All right. Last bit of Sony news. In a bizarre move that makes no sense and potentially future-proofing something, I'm not really sure, uh, they changed the way they do trophy levels, which is just really not that important. But previously, it was levels 1 through 100. You know, you start at 1, max is 100. Now it's 1 through 999, with bronze, silver, gold, and platinum uh, badges going along with it. And there's various tiers within those bronze, silver, gold, and platinum, except for platinum, which is the final level when you're 999. Uh, rumor has it there is a secret level 1000, but it remains to be seen what depraved acts one will need to commit in order to obtain this unholy status. Uh, how are you? How do you feel about trophy hunting and achievement hunting, Sean? I'm sure there are still people out that go out there and play games just to play the achievements or, or, or the trophies, but I, I, I can't think of that. Like your so like on, on the Xbox, like your username at least back in the 360. I don't know if it actively shows it or as blatantly shows it nowadays. It had like the number for the the amount of achievement points you had gotten and gamer score. Uh, yeah, it was your gamer score. And I, I guess once upon a time people cared about that, but I I can't imagine. Like I just I don't care anymore. Like it, I mean, the one nice thing I'll give achievements and, and trophies is they they can be a way to point you to go do things that you would have done in the game otherwise, but. The, the score means nothing to me. Like, I, 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 I could care less. Do you hear that, Sony? Do you hear that, Xbox? Get rid of them. We hate them. Do you have a Platinum or a 1000? Did you ever get one? I have, uh, I have a 1000 in Halo 3 ODST, which was mm. murderous to get. Uh, <laughs> and I have a 1000 in Titanfall 2 because that is a fantastic game and everyone should play it. I was expecting the Titanfall 2 one. <laughs> I had a 1,000 um, in Minecraft. Well, I guess I have a 1,000 in Minecraft, but they, they've added so many achievements to that game that it's it's now mm-hmm. worth like 2,000, and I haven't gone back and gotten all those. Gotcha. I myself have a platinum, a single one and only platinum in Kingdom Hearts 3, which was not too bad. I only had to play like another 15 hours on top of what I did, I think, maybe 20, but it was mostly fun, uh, except for like a couple mini games that even even those weren't that bad but i i do want to get the final fantasy 9 one one day i started it um but there were a few missables and i did miss them despite having a guide and trying to be super careful not to miss them so it was a little disheartening and i'll pick it up someday but aside from that yeah trophies are in general kind of just remain dumb that's not like an updated release of final fantasy 9 just the yeah just the like the port to the modern consoles okay. with some of the like quality of life change like it lets you play at four times speed yeah and okay i had this, max like, damage I, like, I was trying like, i was like man I'm, I'm i'm really certain they didn't have trophies back in the ps1 like not that i played a ton of ps1 but <laughs> i did at least beat final fantasy 7 on it i don't remember any unlockables like that nope nothing like that um, yeah, it's, but yeah, yeah that, Halo ODST because uh, that's where they introduced the firefight mode, which is just the, like the endless waves. And in order to get, mm-hmm. in order to a thousand that on every every level, and there was like eight of them. I want to say you had to get like <sighs> some ridiculous amount. It, it basically required you to like get through full two uh, rounds, and each round was like five waves or something like that. And it was it, it took like two and a half hours to do each. And I, I, I basically it was like over the course of two weeks. Uh, my younger brother, two of my friends, and I—we were just like, "Ah, right, we're gonna do this." And like, it like you'd go in and you and you'd lose, but you'd like strategize the map. It, it was fun, but I it was it was murderous to get. I do not recommend it. Yep, it's a hard balance to strike between like mind-numbingly dull and difficult, <laughs> and so sometimes they just it's like I just wish they didn't exist because like no one's gonna no one would do this on their own. Yeah. And that's, I think, sometimes, like, that's the litmus test for trophies. Like, with somebody, even even kind of a crazy person, would they do this on their own? And if the answer is still no, don't make a trophy about it. Well, that's, so, like, the one games where I do really like them are maybe, like, the open-world games. Because they don't, like, you know, it's like, wait, I have this I have this achievement. You know, these couple achievement quests, what are these? And they, they mm-hmm. can point you towards, like, oh, there's this quest that I didn't even know about in this game. That, right. You know, it, it, yeah, so... 
in that regard, I kind of like it because it can help you find more or make you realize there's more of the game than, than you thought. But especially on like, I mean, like I got Titanfall 2, so I think it required me to like beat the game twice and spend a couple extra, like a couple extra hours picking up like collectibles on maps. But like, I was, it's not like there's anything in Titanfall 2 that I really miss by, you know, by not going after the achievements. It's, I, I found, I probably got three quarters of the achievements by beating the campaign. Yeah. That's the way I like it. Yeah. So that's Sony news. And then uh, Nintendo showed off some new Hyrule Warriors gameplay and some Pikmin 3 gameplay in a uh, Nintendo Treehouse, which is just kind of their like gameplay video series. They call them, I don't know why I call them Treehouses. It's yeah. just kind of cute and fun, I guess. Did you watch any of that? Uh, yeah, I watched both of those. Mm-hmm. I, I skipped the Pikmin part, but I did watch the Hyrule Warriors and, uh, you know, already. I was already on board, but I really liked what I saw. Um, I just, I just think the game looks good. Like I'm looking at, I'm like, my eyes enjoy what I'm seeing. <laughs> it's yeah, as simple I mean, as that. That, that. I mean, I mean, that even just goes to the, the, the general graphics of Breath of the Wild. Although I, 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 it does look polished up even from what we from Breath of the Wild a little bit, which I mean makes sense because Breath of the Wild was also designed to run on the Wii U. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean that 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 is. Uh, I'll probably get that when it comes out, which is pretty rare for me nowadays. Cause I, I am, I am very excited about that. Pikmin three. I didn't play the original. Probably not. I, I, I mean, I, I don't think I have more than 20 minutes in a Pikmin game. So, you know, I'm the same way, but I always wished I had, I don't know why I ever, I don't know why I never got it, but I just didn't. And I'm somewhat intrigued, but because of what I've been playing recently, what with Hyrule warriors only like, two weeks out from Pikmin 3, which comes out, I think, the 31st of this month. Um, I, I'll probably skip it. I did download the demo, which is available now. Um, it oh, will save your... Yeah, there's a demo. It's pretty meaty, supposedly. Like, I don't know, like, a few hours worth of content um, to just kind of, like, max it out, your experience. But the save data will transfer to the main game, so that's always nice when you got a demo that does that. But uh, if you want to... Dip your toes into Pikmin 3, you can do that with the demo available on the Nintendo eShop. Uh, then we have Cyberpunk 2077 has gone gold. And uh, in case you don't know what that means, it just means that the game has been certified by the various certification bodies. Um, you know, the PlayStation and Xbox, etc. All the places that they're going to put their game. Uh, and that means they can start creating the, basically, version 1.0 that they'll ship on discs. Uh, of course, there will be a day one patch. There's always a day one patch. There'll be a day two patch and a three patch, I'm, I'm sure, for a game quite this large and ambitious. But it's always a nice milestone. It Basically, it's the point of no return for these kinds of things, and the game will definitely hit its release date now. Uh, I will fill in the obligatory, Jason. I am super excited. This will be my possible Hades topper for uh, game of the year. No, no. No, 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 no. Jason's a poser. He hates, he's cyber. He don't know anything about cyberpunk. He played the Witcher for like two days and he uh, loved it. Apparently to, to be fair, that's a long time for Jason. <laughs> so long. It's twice as long as he usually plays games. Yeah, see? Um, now nah, I'm just being a contrarian. You know me. I don't like to give too much slack to anybody, especially this stupid company and their completely meteoric rise to success and fame after let's face it it's just one game one game like nobody played the witcher one and two i played the witcher one it's awesome i didn't play witcher two nobody else did i played about Balls and witcher 3. i played a couple hours of witcher two and decided i didn't like the combat yeah and the combat didn't get better it's why i can't like i downloaded it again because i'm gonna try to like play the witcher three that is uh, i'm gonna try to play it on my lunch breaks you know just kind of like chip away at it this will be like the sixth time I've downloaded it. I'm not going to restart this time. I promise I'm not going to restart. But the combat still kind of sucks. It's it's still the same like goofy, dancey, sorty combat from the first one. Only slightly updated for controller support. It's just it's not good. I, That's why I'm going to bump that difficulty down. I've never cared for the game. I just I you know I I know a lot of people you know and, and obviously it gets compared to Skyrim and it gets well you know the story is better and, and a big reason for that is it has better developed characters and part of that's because it has mm-hmm. an actual and you know protagonist as opposed to a blank canvas protagonist right but that falls apart when for me when the protagonist I have to play as just is 
not the type of person I want to play as. Like, I don't mm. like Gerald in those games. And from any of the footage I've seen of those games, I'm like, no. And, and then, I mean, he's he's worse in the books, in my opinion. So, I mean, and I've read the three or the first three or four of those. And it's like, this is, oh, this, cool. this, this is not a character I want to play as. Yeah, I've been, I, I watched the series. It, it kind of got me wanting to read the books, but I'm really bad about reading anything i would uh, so they, like henry cavill does a much better job of like humanizing and making gerald a, a, a relatable character than the book does he is he is not relatable at all in the book um yeah he's he's, yeah, he's I actually, definitely I do like, like a womanizer I, character it's it's not well, sure sure that part that part's definitely there in sp- spades in yeah. the original and i'm pretty sure it's in spades in the third one and you might have to go a little bit more out of your way to like like it might not be front and center because part of three is the fact that he is chasing the quote-unquote love of his life so like he has to tone it back a little bit but that doesn't stop the player from being able to choose you know betting every single female creature doesn't matter what it is yeah. bear woman dryad it's all fair game Sexy bears. Anyway, before we get too far down that rabbit hole, last little bit. This one came out today. God, Rockstar so Games. Rockstar Games of Rockstar Grand Theft Auto Red Dead Redemption 1 and 2 fame. That Rockstar acquired a studio called Ruffian Games. If you're scratching your head wondering, who's that? Why, they're the people who developed Crackdown 2 and 3, and everybody loves those games, right? Right? Yeah. It's, yeah <laughs> that's why they got the big crack crackdown you know four it's on its way any day now <laughs> xbox exclusive so yeah that was odd um probably just like if i had to guess i didn't read too much up on it probably just looking for you know a cheap or reasonably priced developer who might have been looking for an easy out uh without going under <laughs> so, so the, the thing i thought about this though was so because crackdown crackdown I, I i think you can do like uh, campaign co-op, but it, Crackdown doesn't have like the open world thing like GTA and Red Dead Redemption do, right? I'm pretty sure at least three, if not two, has like a sandboxy type of thing. Yeah, does it? I was just mm-hmm. I, I was wondering if maybe they were bringing Crackdown or, or uh, you know uh, bringing on Ruffian uh, to help with actually like a, a, a single player mode because i mean let's face it last i checked uh, gta online was still rolling in f- or you know pulling in fistfuls of cash um and, mm-hmm. I, and I have to believe that uh rockstar has still got uh, uh, most of their focus on that advice any additional story content since we i mean we never got you know a a a, uh, a meaningful uh story dlc for gta 5 like we did for the previous ones it's, it, it, and 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 Let's face it; they don't have to. They're, they're making a ton of money, but I wonder if maybe they're bringing in Ruffian to help fill out that role, since that's not really their focus anymore. I think, yeah, it's exa- pretty much exactly what you said, but flip it. The main, t- the existing team will work on any kind of story DLC or even a GTA Six, while Ruffian will be the maintenance team that continues to make sure that GTA Online, GTA Online, is the cash cow that it is today. Yeah, that's a good point. That, that actually makes more yeah. sense. I wondered too because um, are you had you seen some of the the trouble Red uh, Red Dead Redemption online or two online has been having? I've never heard anything except trouble for when oh it comes my. to that particular. The, mode. The, the, the last news and this is this is a few weeks ago now, but they they mm-hmm. rolled out a patch and it it, it it bugged out the entire game to like NPCs went missing, like all all that was left on the, like you'd load in the games and it would just be like you and like a handful of other players and your horses, and it was like it was so bad that Rockstar had to roll back everyone's version of the game and basically just like cancel what? the patch because it, it broke the game so bad. That's pretty unprecedented. Like yeah. that's that's a rare thing to happen in any any situation. Like I work for a software company and we've rolled back twice, maybe ever. And like yeah. and that was like brief and it was really just a this is easier to do and figure out what happened than, you know. But that's that's crazy. And like I don't know what I don't know what happened with that game's multiplayer. Like they clearly thought they could wrangle it together. I'm sure they that the main team was probably like, yeah, someone that'll be someone else's problem. We're going to yeah. make this game how we want, whether or not that, that this engine and this, the, this architecture will service itself into a multiplayer. That's their problem. And apparently it's a huge problem because it's just not working. Yeah. It's that I, I, I read about I me. Mean, I, I'm with you. I mean, it, pretty much everything I've read about Red Dead Redemption 2 or Red Dead 2 online or however it said has not been positive. 
Um, and then, and then, but that with them actually having to roll back away from the previous patch is just just crazy to me. Uh, if you like this, you can go ahead and subscribe to our channel to see more news videos. We're going to be breaking these things out a little bit more often, so a little bit more bite sized. You can still watch the full episode if you want. It'll be up on the YouTube and um, uh, podcast feeds. Um, but that does it for the news. Uh, Sean, thank you for joining us. Um, hey, and we will see you next time on Never Free to Play. Thank you. <laughs>